Good afternoon, Oliver Taskins. How are you today? I'm, I'm okay. Thank you very much. I want to ask you, what is your rapport to craft? So I have a rapport to craft from a very early age because as a child, my mother was refusing that I use the sewing machine that she has at home. And I had to take the needle and the thread when I wanted to sew something. So still today, when I take the needle and the thread, it brings me back to this very early age. Um, so I would say that I consider craft as bringing sometimes a supplement d'âme to a garment. It's like this touch you know someone has been doing on the craft by themselves, by hand. Obviously, we are we are currently going through a global pandemic um, and this has meant that our whole approach to creation and production has changed. What is the most challenging aspect of craft production today? I think there is so many. Uh, first, we get used to not meet people personally. With the months going by, we start seeing more people really willing to work again. Um, and finding ways sort of like to give services and be, be there for us. And uh, so I have to say that in these recent times, we were, I was like a very touched to see how much people got involved. Um, and in the end, it's, it's a lot of matters with logistics and uh, the personal will also of everybody. I want to ask you um, what the most rewarding part of your job is today. I think my personality is not really looking for rewards all the time. Um, sometimes people around me ask me, like they say, you should be more positive, you should be less anxious, you should be... I get always, it's a natural way for me to really like, I really want things to go the best. It's a reward when you see that something comes really nice. Um, and what do you think the future of the industry, of the craft industry, has in store for us? Future has always been for craft industry is like young people willing to suddenly take the needle <laughs> or anything else and start like, doing something with their hands and eventually have uh, modern techniques come in also. And, and this creative feel is solutions. There always are solutions. Even like a conservative embroidery is actually a solution to create a pattern and something that comes alive. So it's, it, I think it's craft is, is, is connected with creativity and creativity is a lot connected with young people. And you are always surprised when you go to very ancient institutions of craft and embroiderers, they had very young employees always there being trained. So what would be your piece of advice for everyone of that generation? Because I know they've all been um, incredibly frustrated um, at kind of being deprived of those formative, you know, student years. What, what piece of advice would you give to someone right now trying to um, make his, his or her way into the industry? Well, I think that it's obviously it's a very difficult moment for many students leaving school and having to start, you know, like thinking of what's the way to enter and evolve uh, their career. And professionally, I think it's very like difficult. Um, but somehow my piece of advice looks like the same as I, I'm saying all the time. I say that mostly in fashion, there is no two similar stories uh, from any like famous fashion names or brands, they had their own way of evolving, they start a different era. They, every story is really different. And a lot of brands also had their up and downs. And so it's like, it's, this is how life is. This is how it always went. Uh, if you look at the 20th century, there were wars, there were moments where their brands had to cease their activity. So I think it's something that has been always there. And it's important to think of history. It's important also to look what has been done in the past. And it's also important to follow your instinct and try to be as smart as possible to not hurt yourself. Thank you so much for chatting to us today. And we can't wait to see what's <laughs> Thank next. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.